Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to day number 29 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. This is a two part video where you'll be able to set up a product to render in Fusion 360's render workspace. Be sure to watch day number 28 first if you have not already watched it. We'll take a look at how to set up and change lighting and how to process your rendering locally or using the Fusion 360 cloud. In part one, we went ahead and applied appearances and physical properties. Let's go ahead and finish this render off by setting up the environment. If you had closed the file after day number 28 and you go to reopen the file, you'll notice that it defaults to the model workspace. Before we start to change any of the lighting, we'll want to make sure that we set the position of the model. So if you're in the render workspace, go ahead and switch to the model workspace by selecting it in the workspace dropdown list. Now, if you're trying to create a realistic product rendering, I always recommend taking a look at how products are being advertised. This will save you some valuable time as someone's already done some of the research and work for us. If you do a quick Google search, you'll notice that most utility knives play off the fact that they have a sharp blade. So we'll want to angle the knife to be in a similar position where the knife essentially looks like it's in use. Before we can use the move command, you'll notice that we have some grounded objects in this model. We'll want to delete those first. I'll simply click on both grounded icons or the red thumbtack, and I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard. Next, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter M for move slash copy. And in the dialog box, we'll want to make sure the move object is set to components. Then we'll want to select all of the components in the Fusion 360 browser. I'll hold down the shift key and click on the right component. And then I'll select the bottom of the list to select all six components. Next, I'll use the view cube to look at the model from the right side. And I'll simply take the rotation slider and drag it to the left. And I'm just going to go about 25 or 30 degrees, giving us a similar position as if the knife were in use. And I'll click OK to save the changes. At this point, we'll want to set up the rest of the scene settings. We'll first have to switch back to the render workspace by selecting Render in the workspace dropdown list. Now I'll click on the lamp icon or the scene settings icon in the toolbar. In the scene settings dialog box, you'll see that we have a ton of options to alter the environments of the rendering. I'll click on the environment library tab, and you'll notice that there are a number of lighting options that we can apply. Again, you'll typically want to think of the environment that your product would be in. If your product is going to be outside, then you may want to use a warmer light or some of these other downloadable options. In our case, we want our product to appear like it was shot in a studio with a solid background. So we can try out some of these other options. To apply options, simply drag and drop them onto the canvas. I'll drag soft lights over, and you'll see how the scene automatically changes. You can also drag the scene directly to the current environment above. I'll select the photo booth option and drag that above. And you'll see that as soon as I release with my mouse, the lighting updates automatically. Now, our utility knife is getting more realistic, but it's also hard to see exactly how this render will come out. Because of this, Fusion 360 has the In Canvas Render option. If you click the In Canvas Render icon in the toolbar, you'll see that the model starts to render in real time. And it starts off pretty fuzzy as it starts to use your computer's CPU to render the image. As you see here, we have a more realistic preview of how the final rendering will actually process. Now we can change the lights and settings to better suit our needs. I want the highlights to be a little bit more sharp, so I'll drag the sharp highlights environment over to the canvas. After I release the new environment, you'll notice that the in-canvas rendering starts to process again. 
This will take quite a bit from your computer's processing power. So if you're going to make multiple changes, I'd recommend pausing the in canvas render by clicking on it in the toolbar or by clicking the pause icon in the lower right hand corner. I'm also going to reposition the utility knife so the top shows more. I'll simply drag the view cube around until about two thirds of the top is showing. I'll resume the in canvas render and then click on the settings tab to see what other options we'll want to change. You'll notice the ground section allows us to toggle on and off any ground shadows. Now, I don't want any ground shadows for this specific perspective, so I'll make sure that it's turned off. In the environment section, you'll notice that we can change the brightness of the scene along with the background color. I want to change the background to a light gray, so I'll select the color box, move the color picker, and hit apply and OK. And you'll notice that the background color updates accordingly. The rest of the settings allow you to alter the camera and the focal length along with saving your settings as defaults, which can be quite helpful if you need to make a number of different renderings. Now these settings are more advanced, so we won't be going over them in this video. If you'd like to see more videos on rendering, including some of these advanced features, then let me know by commenting below. For now, I'll go ahead and hit the close button to close the scene settings dialog box. At this point, if we're ready to render the model, we can click the render icon in the toolbar. The first thing that you'll notice in the render dialog box is that it has predetermined settings depending on what you need the image for. For this tutorial, I'll select web, and it's also important to note that the last option is custom which gives you the most amount of customization. Now back in the web section, you'll notice that it has a few different aspect ratios. I'll select the third one, which has the highest resolution. The next section is the render with section where you can choose between cloud or local rendering. Local rendering means it will render the image solely using your computer CPU. Therefore, the amount of time that your rendering will take really depends on the power of your computer. It's also important to note that should you choose to render locally, you may not be able to perform too many other functions on your computer. But again, it really all depends on the specs of your computer's hardware. The other option we have is cloud rendering, which will use Fusion 360 servers to process your render. This means it won't rely on your local machine at all once you submit the render. And you can continue to work on another angle or another project. Now, one thing that causes a lot of confusion with cloud rendering is that it requires credits. You'll see that it says this render requires one cloud credit. Now, depending on what Fusion 360 license you're using, such as the education license, you'll be given credits for free but you're also limited to how many credits you can actually use. Now the number of credits really depends on the license and this does change from time to time. So I'll try to put a link in the video description below to the Autodesk website where you can learn more about these credits. In summary, the higher the resolution of your rendering, the more credits you'll need to process the rendering. The other option you're able to change is the render quality. Now standard will render your model at a lower quality, which is great if you're just trying to test the outcome of the render or for various reasons where the quality of your image does not need to be the highest. Contrary, the final selection will output a very high quality render. These renders will take longer to process, so you'll only want to use these renders when you need a final or finished quality render. I'm going to go ahead and set the options to Cloud Render and Final and click that blue Render button. This will save the file and submit the render to the cloud. You'll notice it also adds the image to the rendering gallery below. If you click on that image in the gallery, you'll notice it opens up the image and shows you the approximate amount of time left. The amount of time for cloud rendering varies based on how many files are being rendered at any given time 
and also on the size and quality of the rendering that you have just submitted. You can also cancel the render should you decide that you no longer need it. At this point, you can also submit other renders to the cloud. For example, I may want to use the view cube to change the perspective of this model. I could hit render again and submit this one to the cloud as well, and I could continue to do so for as many renderings as I need. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to speed up the time that it takes for this image to render. When the image is done, you'll see that it displays a preview in the rendering gallery. Now when you click on it, you'll see that you can download the image to your local machine. Hopefully this two-part video on rendering gave you guys a solid understanding of the foundational skills to producing renderings in Fusion 360. If you would like to see more videos on rendering, including some of the advanced features and how to make your renderings as realistic as possible, then be sure to comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.